Hey guys, uh, it's brother, it's brother Travis and brother Jim. How you um, doing, guys? Today we're gonna um, take a different uh, turn. We're um, we're actually gonna jump up to. We're actually gonna start talking about love and. Hey Travis. Yeah, brother Jim. Why does God love me? Ah, funny you should ask. Right? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you should. What's well, well, today's uh, topic is why does God love me? Awesome. So yeah, this is volume three. Discipleship Podcast, and we're jumping into a different little scenario. We're going to talk about why does God love me, or in this sense, you. Why does God love you? And everybody asks the question. That's one of those questions everybody asks, Travis. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Many questions that we ask, but this is one of well, them. Well, if God, and then I've heard this one too. If God loves me, why does he let so many bad things happen to me? Oh, yeah. You hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. exactly. How about you flip that question around and go, why hasn't God let me feel the wrath of sin? You know, if he does so many bad things, doesn't um, that lead? Our, but anyway. our, our topics are, well, why does God love me? What is love? Love and marriage. Marriage and commitment. Love, marriage, compassion, trust, and grace and mercy. Um, now, but we'll get through all of those eventually, but the first one is, why does God love me? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, exactly. I mean, it seems like we got a... A bit of reading to do today, so you might be you might getting very familiar with your Bible today. Either that or your uh, thumbs will get numb. Maybe. Thumbs and your next fingers will get numb. Yeah, yeah I just want to let you guys know and prepare you guys that this is... We do have a bit of scripture to go through today for you guys. Um, most of you know where Genesis is, so let's go ahead and turn to Genesis yeah. 1, 26 through 27. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and read. I'm going to go ahead and read it while he's still flipping. Um, God spoke. Let us make man, human beings in our, in, in our own image. In our own, in our image. Mm -hmm. Make them reflecting our nature so that they, so that they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself. And every animal that moves in, on the face of this earth. God created human beings. He created them like God-like, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. I'm sorry. All right, the next piece that we have is out of Deuteronomy, and it's uh, chapter 7, verses 6 through 10. And from the NIV, it goes, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Now, I'm going to stop there. That's, that's a really good start for in verse 6. He, he says that we're his treasured possession. Treasure. And you're wondering, why does God love me? Well, basically, you are his ultimate. He, you are his right-hand creation. Think of it this way. You know, not only are you his, you his prized possession, but you are you are like a precious, precious gift to him. Mm -hmm. He loves you for everything, everything that he can muster. Absolutely. And I mean, he, I mean, he kind of has the right. Brother Jim. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, he did make us. Right, exactly. I mean, it, it, isn't, that what, isn't that what Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says? Yeah. And he made us in his likeness. Now, and if now, now, he could have made us in a different sense, but he made us in his likeness. You know. Obviously, for a reason that we are his ultimate. You know, it could have, the Big Bang Theory could have actually happened. The way you know the in, uh, the evangel uh, not the evangelists but the uh, evolutionists and people like that think. Mm -hmm. But I like to think of it this way: the Big Bang theory happened because God spoke. Bang! It happened. You know, I mean, sound waves. I mean, they say now you know some of the physics you know majors and professors are, are doing research and they found quarks now and you know smaller than atoms. Yeah. Actually, the smaller now yeah, the yeah, atoms, they're breaking them down. They broke the atoms down further. Right. And they found out that the quarks are actually made up of sound waves. Really? So, in thinking of that theory to the Big Bang theory, 
and then and then when you read the Bible in Genesis in the beginning, God spoke the words. He spoke, spoke speaking creates sound waves. So what you're saying, He actually spoke you and I into existence, brother Jim. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'm reading a book by Lee Strobel, which is great. It's, uh, the, the you know the evidence of finding your creator, mm -hmm. and it goes through a bunch of you know biologists, chemists, physicists, right. you know all these okay. scientists, including. Cool. But anyway, I'm going to continue on off this tangent. Excuse me about that. And then that's just a great start. And starting in seven, Deuteronomy seven seven verse uh, seven verse seven, the Lord did not set His affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it because the Lord loved you and kept you the uh, kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you for the land of slavery for the power from the for the power of the Pharaoh king of Egypt know therefore that the Lord your God is God he is the faithful God he keeping his covenant of love a thousand generations of those who love him and keeping his commands, but those who hate him will repay to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay their face those who hate him. So that that's out of Deuteronomy 7 verses 6 through 10, and it goes through. It really does. It shows you know his love goes in songs that we hear. His love is deeper than the you know the deepest part of the ocean. And it's unfailing, and it, it's you know, Chris, I think of Chris Tomlin and his his songs, and just reading through Scripture, it just through generations and generations, he loves us. So it's never ending; it's unfailing. His love is always there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and for the rest of the for the rest of our time today, guys, we're gonna uh, just camp out in Psalms. But again, uh, again, yeah. Um, <laughs> so go ahead and turn to uh, Psalm 36 for me, and. Uh, we're going to read the uh, 5 through 10, um, if you, you can follow along. Again, Brother Jim is reading through the mess in the, in the um, all right. Okay. Um, Brother Jim, he's reading through the NIV, and uh, myself, I'm reading through the message. So, um, go ahead. Um, God's love is... Meteoric, meteoric, meteoric. His loyalty is astronomic. His purpose, titanic. So good. His, his, his verdicts, oceanic. Yet his largeness, nothing gets lost. Not a man, not a mouth slips through the cracks. How exuberant your love, O oh God. How eager we are to run under the under your wings, to eat our our fill at the banquet and spread as you will fill the tankards with Eden with Eden spring water. You're you're a mm, you're a fountain cascading light, and you open our eyes to to light. Keep on loving your friends. Do your work in welcome hearts, welcoming hearts. Welcoming hearts. Wow. So that is wow. That's all I got to say about that one. Real quick on that one, I see on that last verse, Travis, and it just it touches me to know that you know he doesn't just love us directly. He uses us as a conduit to others to show his love. Oh, absolutely. You know, the first ten. Absolutely. Keep on loving your friends. Do your work in welcoming hearts. You're welcoming people. You're loving people. Mm -hmm. And through welcoming people, you're you're loving and God. Jim, do we oh, do we always do that? Always. Absolutely. We're always, you know, open arms with people and everybody who comes into church, even in, in the workplace. That's right. You know, you just got to love them, man. Love all them. the time. Love them. Just so the next one I'll read, and it's still in Psalm, as we said, we'll be camping here. 48, 48 9, 10. 9 through 10. And it goes as this. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O oh God, you praise. Your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. So, 
within our temple, we're thinking, we can be thinking, you know, when we're at church, we can be thinking in senses of prayer or within ourselves, other, you know, just our body's a temple. So within our, our body and our soul, we meditate and we can feel his unfailing love. If you just, just take a step back and just, you know, let it, let it soak in. Think absolutely. about it when absolutely. you read these absolutely. words. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got to take a step back, guys, and, and just think, hey, you know, we get too caught up in the, like, that narrow vision that, like, we're, we get too we're caught magnified up in on something wrong, but if you take the whole step back, the big picture of the world, and just in his eyes, you'll see it. You ought, you ought to see, I mean, too bad you guys can't see, but the way he, the way he was talking about that was, is like, you're, you're focused on this one little problem, but you got to realize you got to back yourself up and look at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just kind of give that little image. So you're looking, you're looking at a little hole about, well, you can't really see how big the hole is. How big is that hole there, Jim? Uh, I'd say about three, four inches. Okay, three or four inch hole. <laughs> and you, you're like, this is all you see. But if you open up and you look back and you see the whole picture, mm -hmm. then you can actually run with what you have. Mm -hmm. Um... Go ahead and turn to uh, 52, 9 through 8, uh, uh, Psalm 52, and we're going to start in 8, and we're going to go through 9. Um, it says, and, I, and, I'm, and, I'll, and I'm an olive tree, growing green in God's house. I trusted the generous mercy of God, and then now, then and now, I thank you always that you went, went in, into action, and I'll stay right here. Your good name, my hope, in your company with your faithful friends. Basically, that's just that's saying that God, I'm I'm right here. I'm I'm not gonna move because you are right there the whole time. You, I mean, you're there to protect me. You're there to love me. You're there to entrust in me for me to entrust in you and. It's always a good thing. Absolutely. We'll have to keep it going into uh, Psalm 86, verses 11 through 17. A little long, but not too long. It goes as, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all of my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life. Men without regard for you. But for you, O Lord, you are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Wow. Yeah, that was powerful. Wow. Powerful, powerful. And it always shows uh, one of the most, one of the most famous, thing, famous words you read in Scripture, and it's in this passage, is with, it's with Psalm 86 in verse 15. It says, Slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. You know, people. God is always slow to anger with us. You know, he, and everybody thinks that oh, he, he's he's spiting me, and he's why no, is he allowing me to do this? Don't but think God you, I mean, doing that, guys. Don't think God slow to anger. I mean, he's he's he has almost an absent, like a short term memory. Like when you when oh, you absolutely. when you go through absolutely. something, and you repent for your sin, like mm -hmm. you say, oh Lord, I'm so, you know, forgive me, Father, and you and wholeheartedly you go through that and, and you you ask for his forgiveness. He literally goes. Oh, did you say something? No. Like, oh, really? So it's pretty cool. Right. That he's like that. Um, go ahead and, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn to Psalm 103. And we're going to start in verse 10. We're going to go through verse 12. And I'm going to read it from the message this time. He read it from the NIV last time. We're going to read it from the message. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't trust us as our sins deserve, nor pay us back in full for our wrongs. That's a good thing. Mm. As high as heaven is over the earth, so strong is his love to those who fear him. 
And as far as sunrise and sunset, he has separated us from our sin. Now, that is love right there. That is love. The fact that you can take heaven, or I mean, take our sins from us, and separate us so far. Sins can't even. I mean, come, can't even clo come close. It reminds me of a song. It reminds me of as far as the e or east to west. Mm -hmm. And um, I encourage you guys to look up that band. It's uh, Casting Crowns.